Father, we worship you in the name of the Lord Jesus. We thank you for another blessed opportunity to hear and receive the word of God. Our hearts are open. Our minds are open. And we will be blessed in your presence with your word now. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Did you have a beautiful week? Did you win? I'm sure you won. We've been on our series of teachings on three kinds of wisdom. And we observed that these three are number one, Sophia. Number two, Synesis. Number three, Hallelujah. And we said, success or failure depends on the manifestation or the function of wisdom in your life. Sophia is theoretical wisdom. Synesis is critical wisdom. And phrenesis is what? Practical wisdom. Well, that's putting it simply. We already gave some more detailed definitions, right? So, we're moving in to talk about something I wanted to get into um, last Wednesday. The spirit of wisdom. Hallelujah. I have already laid the foundation of this teaching in the first service and um, I really hope that I won't have to go back into that meaning that you're going to have to get all the tapes all the DVDs and listen again and again I, I think during that service we're trying to explain and um, show from the word of God that there is a spirit of wisdom and truly there is a spirit of wisdom and the spirit of wisdom is one of the seven spirits of God you know the, the Bible shows us that there are seven spirits of God and uh, we've written a book on that it should be coming out probably this week yeah seven spirits of God a wonderful book the spirit of wisdom is one of those seven spirits and while we are looking at this in our teaching is because of its importance would you turn into the book of visions chapter number one hallelujah from verse 17 it says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, this was the prayer of the Apostle Paul for the efficient church. He prayed for them that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. And, and Wednesday night we were already getting deep into that in our explanation. And we read from the Amplified Version. So I'm going to read that to you. It says, For I pray always to God, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may grant you. A spirit of wisdom and revelation. He says, 
a spirit of insight into mysteries and secrets in the deep and intimate knowledge of him. Insight into mysteries and secrets. That's, that's what the, the spirit of wisdom will do for you. I said it's one of the seven spirits of God. And um, when you talk about the seven spirits of God, you're talking about the completeness, the perfection of the spirit, the fullness of the spirit. Sometimes, in fact, for most Christians, they only experience the move of the spirit to a very, very limited measure. And yet the Bible says, He that God hath sent, speak at the words of God, for God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. I've heard that there are people who believe that only Jesus had the fullness of the Spirit. Um, he had the Spirit without measure, but that the rest of us um, have to have the Spirit by measure. Well, that's not true. That's not scriptural. That's sense knowledge. The Word of God shows us that every one of us ought to have the fullness of the Spirit. You see, just because your experience doesn't line up with the Word of God, doesn't mean that the Word of God is not for your experience. In other words, you are supposed to experience the Word. If you don't experience it, it doesn't invalidate the Word of God. You just have to subject yourself to the Word and then flow in God's Word so that you can experience the Word. Now, you do not interpret God's word to your experience. You get your experience to line up with the word. If you flow with God's word, you'll see the word of God working in your life. The Bible says for us to work out our salvation with godly reverence. So it's our responsibility to work out our salvation. Which means you've been saved in your spirit. The salvation is of the soul. But if you're going to experience the power, the influence, the glory of that salvation, you have to live from inside out. That's what he's saying. Hallelujah. Okay, so here he says, I pray that the Lord, that God will grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation, of insight into mysteries and secrets. Look, if God didn't intend for us to have insight into mysteries and secrets, He wouldn't have put this prayer here. He's putting this prayer here because it's the prayer of the Spirit for the church. Meaning that God's will, God's purpose is to answer that prayer in our lives. Each one of us should have the fullness of the Spirit. Each one of us should experience the seven spirits of God. Hallelujah. And I said one of the seven spirits of God is the spirit of wisdom. The spirit of wisdom is the one that brings you into what we just read. Mysteries and secrets. Now... If you notice, in that King James Version, he said, I pray to God, I pray that God, our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Revelation, the Greek, the Greek for that revelation you have there is apocalypsis. Okay? Apocalypsis. And that means an unveiling. It, it, it's used when you're dealing with mysteries. It means revelation. The revelation of the unknown. The unveiling of the unknown. So he's saying, I pray to God that he will grant you the spirit of wisdom. To reveal to you the unknown. To unveil mysteries to you. 
He'll unveil mysteries and secrets to you. Hallelujah. Oh, that's, that's wonderful. That's what the spirit of wisdom will do for you. Remember, we were sharing on Wednesday night. He said, Jesus said, He that follows me shall not walk in darkness. He shall not walk in darkness, but he shall have the light of life. Now, when you've got a problem in your job or in your family or in your own body that you, cannot, you don't understand, and it looks like there's no answer, like someone is afflicted with, with, with uh, hernia, he doesn't know what to do, so he's looking for a doctor. Okay, because as far as Hine is concerned, he is in darkness. And so he's looking for a man who has light on the subject of Hine. If he were afflicted with cancer and he didn't know what to do, he'd be looking for somebody who had light about cancer. Because he is in the darkness as far as cancer is concerned. You see, your area of ignorance is your area of darkness. You see that? As far as you are ignorant, you are in darkness. Whatever it is that you're ignorant of. When your business has become a mystery to you, like some people say, I don't know what's going on with my business. I'm trying this and I'm trying that. Nothing seems to be working out. I, 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 don't, I want somebody to help me, nobody to help me. Or some people say, well, I, I, I don't know what I'm doing with my money. I get money and I don't know what I'm doing with it. I can't find my money. Money just mysteriously leaves me. You see, he's in the darkness as far as his management of his money is concerned. As far as his business is concerned, he's in the darkness. You see, but Jesus said something. He said, he that follows me shall not walk in darkness. But he shall have the light of life. There is a light that has been granted us. Thanks be unto God. See, the Bible says Jesus Christ in him. You see, uh, let's understand this. When Jesus was born, he was growing up a little, a little boy. You read St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 2. From verse 40, the Bible tells us that he waxed strong. Okay? And Jesus it says, the boy grew and waxed strong and was filled with wisdom. Okay? He was filled with wisdom. That's what the Bible says. Filled with wisdom. But wisdom at that level. Because later on in verse 52, the same chapter, chapter 2 in Luke's gospel, in verse 52, the Bible tells us that he grew, he increased in wisdom. Now, if he had gotten all of it, he wouldn't have increased in wisdom. So he says, so when did Jesus become the fullness of all that? Hey, watch this. Jesus was anointed of the Holy Spirit. At the river Jordan. When the Holy Spirit came into his life. And he was filled with the Spirit. There he received the fullness of the Spirit. That fullness of the Spirit. Was what brought what you would call eternity into him. What do you mean? I, I'm talking about everything that God will give is in the Spirit. He was given the fullness of the Holy Ghost. He received the Spirit without measure when he was baptized at the Jordan. Now the Bible tells us that in Christ are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Now, it's that Spirit of God that created the world. The Bible tells us when God spoke, the Spirit brought it to pass. Okay? Now, that word that God spoke by which the world was created is the one that became flesh and dwelt among us. That's Jesus. Now, we have been given the very life that Jesus has. 
now we're partakers of his divine nature we are new creations in Christ Jesus when you're born again you're a new creation now this new creation is a partaker a participator in the divine nature in the divine experience in the divine walk and we have also received the spirit without measure plus that what it says that all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hid in Christ I told you Christ means Jesus you and me that's the meaning of Christ because now we are in Christ Christ doesn't refer to Jesus alone because the Bible says Jesus is the head of the body the body is the church so you won't feel the head with all of the Spirit of God and feel the body with a part of it come on and Jesus said the Holy Spirit shall take of mine and shall show it unto you why because we're joint heirs together with him now Jesus said follow me he says anyone who follows me shall not walk in darkness he shall have the light of life he shall have the light of life he shall have the light of life there's a light by which we walk as children of God now most Christians sadly do not even know about it they don't know what it is they don't know what Jesus meant when he said follow me why because most of them have never been taught now let's put it this way hello 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 are you still there can you go back again and look at that uh, 17th verse of Ephesians chapter 1 that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the epignosis of him you remember that okay he wants God he prays to God he wants God to give to them to give to the vision Christians and that that's the same thing for us if it was good for them it's good for us now he was praying to God to give them the spirit of wisdom King James says and revelation in the Greek there's no difference between if it says and revelation or in revelation or for revelation it's one and the same so the translators use the word and it could have been for so we'll read it this way that he may grant you or give you the spirit of wisdom for revelation in the knowledge of him you see that that's the reason why you have that translation the, the amplified version saying insight into mysteries and secrets that's what the spirit of wisdom will do for you he will unveil mysteries to you now how does he do it it's it's revelation it's as though the veil is taken off and you have unusual understanding hallelujah He can give you insight into how to manage your money how to manage your business what to do about your job most people have never look look let me explain something do you know why we have fewer and fewer people who know how to walk with the Holy Ghost such that too many Christians even Christians are stoned by the miraculous and then they believe it's not real you know why because people are too busy in their minds too busy doing nothing I want to show you what to do are, are you there too many are too busy doing nothing 
They're not using their minds. Did you ever know what's, what's called quiet time? I, I remember some years ago, a certain preacher was telling his congregation that um, he doesn't believe in quiet time. Then he said, listen, listen. Then he said, pastor does not have, he said, pastor does not have quiet time. I was sitting up somewhere. And I heard him telling the congregation that. Several years ago. I was stunned. Then he said, what I do is, I pray all the time. As I go, I pray. I thought, is this guy alright? Something was wrong. You can't do that. You need to have quiet time. If you're, go <laughs> if you're going to grow, if you're going to see the extraordinary. You see, you want to, you want to, you want to succeed at a level that's beyond normal. The Bible says, did you read about David? He said, God has made me a wonder. David became a wonder to others. That's what God wants every one of us to be. A wonder. You, if you want an ordinary life, then you don't need the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes into your life, He makes your life supernatural. That means extraordinary. But you have to learn how to function at that realm. People are busy from sun up to sundown. They are busy from morning till night. Busy doing nothing. Busy going nowhere. How sad. And then for many of them who are born again, they are still expecting that once they pray, God should do something. And that's why they are kicking their enemies. I, 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 I give my enemy uppercut in Jesus' name. <laughs> I, I kick my enemy. I put my enemy in the coffin. Nonsense. <laughs> it's senseless. It's unscriptural. Huh? Then somebody said, um, so he's talking about himself. He says, uh, uh, so um, the man now said that, um, that God will punish my enemy. It, it, he means that, God, that, that the man said God will punish him. Do you understand? But he doesn't want to put himself, they say God said he will punish my enemy. <laughs> so they said they will kill my enemy or my, my enemy will die. <laughs> what kind of communication? <laughs> People who live in fear. They're the ones that talk like that. My enemy, my enemy, my enemy. Even what amazed me was when I found out that even young stars talk like that. Young people. Where did you get that kind of language from? From, of course, the older ones. Ha <laughs> ha! A chip off the whole block. See? That's sad. Don't talk like that. When your mind is busy, you don't get anything. Some people pray, pray, pray. After they have prayed, you just carry the things and run and hurry off. And they're busy throughout. And they come back. There's such a thing as quiet time. Are you still there? You must have it if you're going to know the Spirit more. You must have it if you're going to function in the supernatural. You must have it. This is one place where many of you at least keep quiet for a few minutes. Did I hear that the World Cup will be starting when? When's the World Cup? When is starting? Hey, will you still come to church? <laughs> Starting on Friday, are they playing any matches on Sunday? Why are you pretending you don't know now? <laughs> I want to know. Will they play on Sunday? Morning, afternoon, or evening? Evening. So morning is free. So you'll be in church in the morning. <laughs> no, think about it. Here are players 
They're all going to Germany, I guess. Germany, right? And they're going to be playing there. And these young guys are making millions of dollars. Now, we're going to have millions of people who are making nothing. And they're going to spend their time. Some will even borrow money. They're going to do everything they can to be watching these guys who are making what? millions of dollars. Watched by millions of people doing nothing. And at the end of the matches, they're going to say, ah, the way that guy scored that goal, eh? ah, ah. What have you done with all the films you've been watching all these years? Phronesis. Phronesis. The lack of phronesis has put men and women in abject poverty. Not knowing how to apportion their time. For one thing or the other. You know what the psalmist said? It wasn't really, it, it's, it's in the 90th psalm, but it was written by Moses, even though it's in the book of Psalms. He said, teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Now listen, when it says teach us to number our days, many don't understand what he's talking about. There, he's not saying, teach us to count our days he said teach us to number our days that's talking about scheduling okay he's talking about planning your day scheduling your day he says teach us to number our days so you number your day Look at the whole month. You number it and you can number a day into hours, into minutes. So you know what you do on a daily basis. And he said, teach us. Which means God can teach you how to plan your day. So that you'll be more productive than the ordinary life. Most people are unproductive. What does your day bring forth? Are you still there? Now some of you are behaving like you've never, you never, you, you didn't hear what I said now. But that's the truth. You just wake up and, you know, you are gone. Do you have a plan? Do you, have, do you plan your day? Do you plan your life? So you number your days. You say what you're going to do on Monday, what you're going to do on Tuesday. Number your day for a purpose. And I said you can number it into hours. You can number it into minutes. You decide what you're going to do before the day is over. What are the things you're going to accomplish? What are you going to accomplish this week? This is the beginning of a new week. Have you numbered your days? You know what? We expect, we expect success. We expect things to change in our lives. But we, have not, we haven't acted. Phronesis is practical wisdom. It means that you are taking from what you've got on the inside. The idea is inside. Do you understand that wisdom you got on the inside? Sophia, inside your spirit. And you pull from there. And you analyze it with synesis. Do you understand that comprehension? Are you getting what I'm telling you? When you start putting it to work, that's phronesis. Acting according to the wisdom you got on the inside. But most people don't. The man who says he's wise but doesn't act according to the wisdom is not intelligent. But we say he's intelligent. How could he be intelligent? When he doesn't act, he only talks. He says he knows it, but he doesn't know it. It's not working. You can be a... 65 year old baby this is a fact listen wisdom doesn't come with age 
And the Bible says the aged are not always wise. So, it doesn't come with age. It's not how long you've been there. What I'm sharing with you is what can make the difference between now and the future that God wants you to have. Most people never enter into God's promises for them, into God's plans for them. You say, how do you know? Let me give you some examples from the Bible. You remember the man Saul who was made king of Israel? Did you know that God planned for his dynasty to, to be forever? How come he failed? And it was David who took over that. God had planned that he was going to let his lineage continue forever. But the guy lost it. Didn't turn out the way God wanted. What of the children of Israel? God told them he was taking them to the promised land. Did they get there? No. It was their grandchildren, the little ones that got there. The rest of them perished in the wilderness. Why? Because the Bible says they were unbelieving. They were stubborn. So just because God has a plan for you doesn't mean that you're going to fulfill that plan. You will have to play your role. You have to do your part. See? If you're going to fulfill God's purpose for your life. Some people think that whatever happens, they say, whatever will be, will be. If it's mine, it will come to me. That's a lie. Don't believe that. The Bible doesn't say that at all. It doesn't say if it's yours, it will come to you. Because I always believe that whatever is mine is coming to me. If it doesn't come to me, then God did not plan for it to be mine. <laughs> that is the voice of foolishness. You see, because that's human wisdom. Human wisdom reasons, why do I have to struggle? If it's coming to me, it will come to me. Okay, why didn't you stay at home to see all the books that you read in school? They would have come into your mind. Why did you go to school? If it's mine, it will come to me. <laughs> the teacher and the headmaster would have come to you when you were in primary school and entered your mind. Isn't it true? If it's mine, it will come to me. Stay at home. The car in the garage, tell it to come and pick you inside the parlor. If it's mine, it will come to me. Why do you go into the car? Sit at the dining table and say, if the food in the kitchen is mine, it will come to me. <laughs> so when it comes to things we don't know, we pretend. Why don't you just accept that you don't know it and let somebody teach you? That's the way. Hallelujah. All right. Now, I said I was talking to you about quiet time. I know you want to hear it, right? Okay, I want to tell you what to do with quiet time. You must have a quiet time. I said, he told us, teach us to number our days. So, we must speak a period where we can stay quiet before the Lord. Now, every great man or woman in the Bible had such an experience with God. If you don't have that experience of being alone and quiet before the Lord, you will not accomplish much. Did you hear me? You will not accomplish much. Now, what I'm telling you is not just for ministers. It's something you're supposed to do in your life. If you want the creative life, You've got to have this. If you want an exceptional business life, if you want an exceptional academic life, anything, if you want to be exceptional, then you must have quiet time. Now, this quiet time, what do you do with it? I want to tell you. Now, many years ago, I would go to... Um, I would go to a remote area. That's what I would do. Okay? But uh, you're in a big city now. And there's no remote area. You know what I'm talking about. So he says, so what, what, what do I do? Well, it's not so much a physical thing as it is a mental thing. It is not so much where your physical body is, 
as what you do with your mind. What do you do? All right. Since you cannot find a physical wilderness to go, okay, or climb a physical mountain, because all of that was for a purpose, not because God was in the wilderness or he was on the mountain. The idea was to be away from the busy activities around you. And you step away from all those busy activities. Jesus said, enter into thy closet. Okay? So you shut your door. Now, there are people who live with some other people, so they can't, they can't shut their door. Because there are other people who are inside the same room with them. I'll give you, I'll give you an idea, I'll tell you what to do. Okay, so, find a place to be alone. And when you're alone, relax yourself completely. Turn off the light. And then do like this. Did you see me? Turn off the light. Then shut your eyes. And remain there. The first 30 minutes, you may not... You may still be trying to get yourself in. So continue until you get yourself in. Now if you're smart, put a paper and a pen close by. Because God's going to talk to you. And when you put your writing material close by, that's faith. Now here's how God deals with us. He deals with us in the arena of faith. If you do not keep a writing material close by, he will not be willing to tell you very important things. Why? Because he will tell you, you will lose them. You see that? Otherwise you say, now you get something to write. So you make sure you have it by you. That means you're ready. Now that's the beginning. Are you hearing me? Now some people are too busy for this simple thing. And this thing, a few minutes with the Holy Spirit, can change your whole life forever. He will turn you into a success, an unusual success. A few minutes. When he tells you something to do. How do I always know what to do? By listening. So I listen to the Spirit. And when He talks to you, now some people say, well, I don't know, maybe if God talks to me, how am I going to know that, that um, uh, it's God and not my mind? Oh, that's very simple. That's very, very simple. You want to know the difference between God and your mind? It's very simple. Learn to meditate on the Word of God. Your mind will fade away. The thoughts from your own mind will fade away. Because of the overpowering uh, um, uh, manifestation or the overpowering strength of God's word beclouding the thoughts of your mind. See, the Spirit of God will take over. Another thing you can do is to lie down. So that all your body is relaxed. You say, what if I fall asleep? Go ahead and fall asleep. Then the master will come and say, sleep as thou. <laughs> At least you write that down. Hallelujah. If you want, see, maybe you have a, a little kiosk. You know what a kiosk is? A small kiosk. You want that kiosk to become a supermarket. And from a supermarket to be a super mall. 
It can happen. How can it happen? By doing this thing I just told you. In the morning, give him that time. And pray. When you pray, you pray, you listen, you relax yourself. Whatever he tells you, put it down. Then, go to work. Somewhere in the day or in the night, somewhere, whatever is okay for you. There are no fast, no hard and fast rules. Pick another time. I'm alone with the Spirit. Speaking in tongues is the first and best way to activate in your spirit. So when you speak in tongues, you activate your spirit. The Bible says, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edified himself. Then it says, I'll pray with the spirit, and I'll pray with the understanding also. So when you, it says, if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit pray it. So when you pray in an unknown tongue, it's your spirit that's praying. So you know it's your spirit. Okay? That's what the Bible says. Now when your spirit is therefore activated, your mind is without any understanding. It's unfruitful. So what? From there, you can now calm down. Haven't spoken in tongues and spoken in tongues and activated your spirit. Then you become calm. It won't be long before the spirit of God starts moving. You know, and you begin to experience those wonderful currents of electricity. Divine electricity. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. That's wisdom, brother. That's wisdom. I'm giving you phronesis. <laughs> See, when you do that, you will surely be ahead of those who don't. The matter of time. Now, let me tell you some of the benefits of that. Apart from the Spirit of God talking to you at all, there's what you call um, the location of the Spirit. What do I mean? The positioning of the Spirit. See, sometimes the Spirit of God doesn't have to give you an information. doesn't have to say anything special. But here is what will happen. Your spirit will become more easily attuned to the Spirit of God. In other words, you will be synchronized with the Holy Ghost. Do you understand? Your spirit will become synchronized with the Spirit's will through your quiet time like this what happens is God starts positioning your spirit into the very position that he has in his calendar which means you will find yourself through God's uh, synchronization in God's will in God's purpose in God's timing You'll be located in God's position for your life. And that's what he wants first. Then you start running on his calendar. Oh. Ay, 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 ay. Are you here? Are you following what I'm sharing with you? I said, apart from him talking to you, this is something that happens. As you continue to pray with the Spirit, pray with the Spirit, that means praying in other tongues, okay? And then you become quiet and, and spend time just alone. You don't have to say anything, you just be there. And then once in a while you talk in other tongues and meditate on the Word, meditate on the Scriptures. And thank God, and meditate on the Word. The Holy Spirit will be carrying out His ministry. Remember, He is the one called, He's called the Paraclete. Okay, that means one called to walk with you pari pasu. Do you understand? He's going alongside with you. Okay, so what happens is, he is the, he is the greater one. So he takes you at his speed. That now, let's go. So before long you find you are taking steps at the same time with the Spirit then you find that you are in God's perfect will for your life. Oh, hallelujah. That's the best place to be. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That's the best place to be. Most people are living outside of the will of God. Most
most people are. That's the reason for their frustrations. That's the reason for their unhappiness. They think someone else is responsible for their lack of joy. They think someone else is responsible for the problems they are facing. No, nobody's responsible. When you walk in the will of God, you become, you, when you're in synchrony with the Spirit of God, you find that you are at peace also. The Bible says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is. Look at it. He says, Listen, he says, Whose mind is stayed. What does that tell you? It's synchronized to be the same with the Spirit. His mind is stayed on him. He will keep him in perfect shalom. The Hebrew, the Hebrew expression there says, that will keep him in shalom, shalom. He says, peace, peace. That's what the word says. He's letting you understand that expression. He says, peace, peace. What does that mean? He's dealing with peace of prosperity. That's why he uses it twice. He says, Shalom, Shalom. Hallelujah. Are you still there? Oh, your life was... Listen, you were raised for the glory of God. God, there's nobody, nobody was ever like you. Nobody in this world today is like you. Nobody will ever be like you. So what? Shine for the master. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Shine, shine for Jesus. You're going to be the best of you. Can you say amen? You're going to be listening for ideas, listening for thoughts, listening for the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. And you well up in your spirits. You know, there are people who are wondering what to do about their children. They complain, they've complained to everybody. But the Bible says, Thou hast set the world. So thou hast set in, in uh, eternity in their hearts. Everything is in there. Listen, and since Jesus Christ has been made unto us wisdom from God, it means all of the wisdom you require. For handling that wayward son, that rebellious boy, all the wisdom you require. For dealing with any situation, whether it's your wife, whether it's your husband, whether it's your boss or your employee, whatever it is, there is divine wisdom inside. He says, with joy shall you draw water out of the well of salvation. Where is it? In your spirit. So what? When is it going to happen? During your quiet time. During your quiet time, when you're there, some of you will see visions. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, some of you will actually, you literally see visions. By the time you get up, you know who to talk to. You know what phone call to make. You know what to write. You know what to say. Some of you are supposed to be facing an interview. You are carrying all the books. Read. I didn't say don't read. Make sure you read. But one thing you need is to stay in so that you can, you can relate with wisdom from above. Are you hearing me? You are going to be so successful. Hallelujah. 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 Success is yours. Prosperity is yours. Increase is yours. In the mighty name of Jesus. Worship Him and thank Him.
thương giọt mưa rơi hay giọt lệ tuổi hờn như ngàn sợi tơ vương đang tóc rối mưa răng mắc cho lòng ai lạc lối ảo ảnh buồn theo sức khói giận tan tình trái ngang duy kiếp làm bẽ bảng mong mỏi đợi trong giờ giang nuối tiếc đường sương gió bước độc hành mải miết đời phù du đâu ai biết ngày sau tìm dư hương trong mưa gió nghẹn ngào sống nhân thế muôn ngày sau vậy gọi tàn giông bão niềm đau còn đọng lại chờ trong khi dựa vợi tình ta ai hẹn đâu mà mắt đẫm lệ nhòa thương ra giết cuộc tình xa vạn dặm 